Meryl Hodge went on uh, NBC Chicago and flat out said he doesn't think that Caleb Williams is special. And of course, this went crazy viral because the most viral analysis that Meryl Hodge ever did was telling the world that Johnny Menzel was not the guy to take, which I'm not undercutting him at all. But after watching the Johnny Menzel documentary, that wasn't a hard one to call. <laughs> that wasn't a full-blown Nostradamus call to make, right? But I want to play the actual quote that has gone viral here so y'all can hear what I'm talking about. Oh, I've only watched Caleb Williams three games last year, three this year, so I'm only halfway done, yeah, okay? Right. The one thing that I that is clear, he is not special. He is not something unique like a Patrick Mahomes. Okay. And I hope the Bears don't think, well, let's 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 try to make up for our mistake when we pass up Patrick yeah. Mahomes and go get the Patrick Mahomes. The right. kid is not Patrick Mahomes. Ain't even remotely close to that. All right, stop the tape. So everyone usually stops there. And my problem is less about what his opinion is of Caleb Williams because draft analysts get shit wrong all the time. Again, we just finished watching the last pick in the draft playing the Super Bowl against a guy that Merrill Hodge had a second round grade on who might end up being the greatest quarterback we've ever seen when it's all said and done. So people are wrong on that shit all the time. But my problem is his reasoning, which a lot of you didn't get to because all you heard was someone confirm your bias about what you already thought about Caleb Williams beforehand, so you didn't even care to dig that deep. But I did. Let's hear what he said. Well, the, the first thing is there's there is no... First of all, his ability to throw on the run is very disturbing. It is very inaccurate, and it's all over the place. Okay. Um, there's a ton, a ton of RPO, which nobody's going to RPO themselves to a Super Bowl in our league, okay? They're seeing that in Miami, okay? You do got to push the ball down the field. Now, there are times that he does, and he does that well. He doesn't play, he doesn't play with a lot of in anticipation because of all the clean pockets that exist in him. Yeah. So I got to look at the dirty style and how he functions in that, and that's going to be pivotal because if you don't, you can't play in a dirty pocket, you'll never play in our league um, and be consistent. And the thing that's disturbed me right now is his inability to be consistent on the move as a thrower. That's really, that's really and he's willing to do that a lot more than he should, than he has to. Yeah. You just, you don't have that choice in our league. You know, you got to play from a dirty pocket. You got to process things and be accurate and consistent. And um, I don't see anything magical with his arm that would be like, wow, that's Patrick Mahomes style. It is not Patrick Mahomes style. His mobility is not anything special. Yeah. Nobody will watch him on tape, getting rid of him, going, wow, we really got our hands full like Lamar Jackson. Ain't got that. So I just don't see. There's not enough there to be like, to this point where I'd be like, yeah, he's worth me getting rid of Justin Fields. And bringing this guy in, who's never played in the National Football League, and has to come, has to, has to overcome all of those hurdles, yeah. just to give us a chance to win. All right. So one, I don't know how you watch six plays of Caleb Williams and leave with the conclusion that he isn't special, let alone six games. So I'm not even going to use the whole he didn't watch enough tape on him to come to this conclusion. I'm just confused at the conclusion because there's some contradictions there. If you want to tell me that the system he ran was very RPO heavy, very true because it's a Lincoln Riley system. However, Lincoln Riley quarterbacks seem to be doing pretty well in the NFL. Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts seem to all be doing pretty well. Two of those three quarterbacks I just named were in the playoffs this year and the other one just came off ACL after being in the playoffs the year before. And the thing is also with the RPO system, you can't say that a player in an RPO system doesn't play with anticipation and doesn't make his reads correctly because RPO systems, for the most part as a quarterback, is reads and anticipations, which is how you make your reads correctly. And it's weird because Merrill Hodge knows that. Like, I'm not rediscovering fire here. This is pretty common knowledge. Also, the arm strength conversation he says there's no throws he makes on film that make you go wow what an arm that's just a flat out lie <laughs> like that's just a lie <laughs> like i don't i like i'm sorry i don't want to call the man a liar insult him or anything that's just false like it again six plays of caleb williams will tell you that one's a lie there are no wild plays like that that's just flat out false with the mahomes comparisons i've always held off on those just because i don't want to put that on a 21 year old kid Hey, this guy is the next version of the greatest thing we've ever seen on the field, possibly. Like, no, I'm not doing that. I've always said he's a rich man's Kyler Murray, which is he's a better throw of the football than Kyler Murray is. He's bigger than Kyler Murray is. Same arm angles, maybe 5% less athleticism. 
same escapability for the most part, and still makes these incredible throws on a run, which is another thing Merrill Hodge said that really baffled me when he said his, in, his inconsistencies with throwing on a run, which again, is just weird. And the player I just described as the better Kyler Murray is, is about what, 70% Mahomes? Arm angles, escapability, massive arm, eh, Mahomes-esque. Again, not a good comp because no one's Mahomes, but a rich man's Kyler Murray is what I've been calling in pretty much this whole draft prospect pro process. But again, Another one of the critiques he had was his uh, presence in the pocket. And I would love to hear Caleb explain this because I have that same critique, which is escapes the pocket a little early. I want to shoot him the bail of. I think it's because he knew his defense was dog shit, so he knew he had to get out there and make as many big plays as possible because I watched him in this Heisman year, too. And there are plenty of plays where he sits in the pocket, takes the big hit and deliver strike there's one in particular i think it's second quarter of the arizona game where he delivers just an absolute frozen rope from 30 40 yards out straight to the end zone for a touchdown and he gets drilled for what ends up getting called rough in the pass or it doesn't matter completes the pass anyways and that's why i have to give him the benefit of the doubt on that because i'm like okay you can do this i've seen you do this but this year you chose not to I know he can see the check down. Sometimes I think he should get it more. But as I'm watching it on film, again, I don't know the reads. I'm not in their offensive meeting rooms. But if you watch the back of his helmet and just see where he's looking, you can see him staring right at the check down. But I think it has a lot to do with, again, the fact he knows his defense was dog shit. And he knew, all right, I got to make as many big plays as possible so we don't lose this game. And you know who else had that same complaint coming out of college? Mahomes. A lot of these same critiques Mahomes had because he was in a bunch of shootouts when he was at Texas Tech because his defense was dog shit. That's why his record was 13 and 19 coming out of college because there's only but so much winning 45 to 42 one person can do no matter how good you are a quarterback. But the main thing about this Merrill Hodge thing, because again, this is less about him and more it is about y'all. Because I know that most of you did not get to the point of his actual critique of Caleb Williams. All you heard is he's not special. And now you can hide your other actual biases against Caleb Williams behind. Oh, well, Merrill Hodge said he's not special. He was right about Johnny Manziel. And now you don't have to explain further because you feel like that's vindication enough. All you care about is he's, he confirmed that this dress wearing nail painting lice can do that you already don't like isn't special. Like you resent the fact that he is. And this is where the black quarterback fan club comes in. We've had, let's see, as far as generational quarterbacks coming out the draft, quote unquote, can't miss prospects, which six months ago, Caleb Williams was until all this weird scrutiny started coming up. What is it? Elway, Manning, Andrew Luck, Trevor Lawrence. I maybe missed one or two in there. So we'll say four. Caleb Williams, the only black one. The four I named prior did not face scrutiny like this at all. Let's just say he's Kyler Murray and not Patrick Mahomes. Kyler Murray was still far and away the first pick in that draft. And if the Cardinals could do it again, they do it again a thousand times. And I just find it odd that the first time there's a black can't miss prospect generational quarterback, all these weird Nick picks and critiques come out and it's only going to get worse as draft season comes. And for those of you who enjoy watching Caleb Williams, instead of getting your opinion swayed, and listening to this bullshit, most of which having nothing to do with football and what you'll actually see on the field. Whenever you hear some nonsense, just go watch some Caleb Williams tape. I promise it'll wash all of it away. Whenever you hear somebody say, oh, well, I don't like the fact he cried in his mom's arm. Go watch a game. Oh, well, I don't like this dress you wore in G Coop. Go watch a game. Oh, well, I don't think his arm talent is special. Go watch a game. I promise it'll go right out the window. You're going to watch the game and be like, these people are out of their goddamn mind. Caleb Williams is incredible. <laughs> and that'll be the end of that. Cool? Cool. Cool.